Hey guys, what's up? This is Bharat Nagpal. You're watching iGAN. Today, Xiaomi has launched the Redmi Note 8 Pro in India. We're going to be finding out if this is a due successor of the Redmi Note 7 Pro, which is the outgoing model. So let's quickly get started. Now, the phone has been launched by the company in three variants, one with 6GB of RAM and 64 or 128GB of storage, while the other is an 8GB RAM variant, the one we are checking out. This also has 128GB of storage. There are also three colors, a black, a green, and the white one, which is obviously going to be the most coveted color. So I would recommend that you get this color. As far as build quality is concerned, the phone is really nicely made. It looks extremely premium. Also, if you guys are interested in buying the phone, I leave links in the description below to check out the device. Now, coming back to the build quality the phone has glass on the front as well as the back both are gorilla glass 5 on the back the phone is extremely well polished and rounded off so it fits in the hand really comfortably so if you have larger hands or smaller hands the phone will fit in your hand without any problem of course it brings down the durability of the device from a metal phone but the gorilla glass 5 makes the phone look premium and really high end Another thing that Xiaomi has changed with the Redmi Note 8 Pro is the bezels you do have a drop notch camera on the front but the bezels on the bottom as well as on the sides are considerably lower than the Redmi Note 7 Pro. So on the front is a 6.53 inch display. This is a larger display, but it takes more or less the same space as the previous phone. You have smaller bezels, but you still have the drop notch camera, which is on the front of the device. The display is a full HD plus display, but supports HDR and has a 500 nits of brightness. It has good viewing angles pertaining to the fact that it's an IPS LCD display and the 500 nits of brightness will help with the HDR content as well as visibility outdoors. With the Redmi Note 8 Pro, there is a first for Xiaomi. For a very long time, Xiaomi has been using Qualcomm chipsets in the Redmi Note series, but this time around, the company has decided to use a MediaTek G90T chipset. In general, people assume and believe that the MediaTek chipsets are inferior to the Qualcomm Snapdragon chipsets that are always placed in Redmi devices. In this case, Xiaomi has sort of designed this chip specifically for their usage. So the Helio G90T chip, which has an octa-core CPU, manages to give you performance and graphics capability without compromising on battery life or without overheating the device. As far as benchmarks are concerned or day-to-day -day performance is concerned, the Redmi Note 8 Pro does really perform. You'll find yourself jumping through tasks or playing games on high graphics, including PUBG, which works really well on the Redmi Note 8 Pro. You'll also find that general everyday usage is really smooth, multitasking and switching between applications is a breeze. Video playback is also good on the display and with everything combined, the phone is a pretty impressive performer considering the price category that this phone is launched in. Another thing that the company is really stressing on is the cameras. Now, this is the first Redmi device with a macro lens. This is a dedicated macro lens, something that we saw on the Moto One Macro. If you guys are interested in checking that video out, I'll leave a link on the top right bubble, also in the description, if you wanna go check out the Moto One Macro. My only concern with the two megapixel macro lens is that it's a two megapixel macro lens, and which means that you won't get good resolutions, you won't get higher image sizes, but for most people, or sharing on the internet, or basic usage, you could pass off with a two megapixel sensor, but in real life situations, or if you wanna do any kind of professional macro photography, you will not be able to do that with the two megapixel camera that's on the device. You do have your other three cameras, one is an ultra wide camera. The primary camera, which is a 64 megapixel camera, is also really unique. Now, this is a sensor that Samsung has designed, and the sensor size in itself is also quite large, which we saw with the invite that Xiaomi sent us. They sent actual three camera sensors. So you can see that the 64 megapixel sensor is much larger than the outgoing 48 megapixel sensor. This allows more light to come through to the sensor, and of course, will allow you to get better detail on your images. But the 64 megapixel number is more or less a number and it's not going to give you the kind of detail that you would get from say a full frame camera it allows you to click larger images but i would recommend that you stick to normal mode and click pictures and stay away from the 64 megapixel mode because not only is it going to consume large amounts of storage it's also going to take longer time to process those images and you're not really going to be able to use those 64 megapixel images if you're only uploading to the internet image quality otherwise is pretty good image samples are nice from the camera you get good color precision as well as contrast on the images and whether you're using a photo lens or a ultra wide lens you'll get good results all in all the fact that you do have a macro lens makes the phone a little more versatile and you can click pictures of different situations 
lens using the different lenses, which is really unique for the device and for this category as well. As far as video quality is concerned, the video is pretty stable thanks to some software image stabilization. But again, video quality is not up there with many of the other devices that we've seen in the past, especially video quality from Samsung phones has been really good in this category. The front facing camera is also really good and the portrait mode on the front as well as the back camera works really well. You do have the ability to control the aperture before you click the picture and you can also adjust portrait lighting and that is a feature in the camera and uh, you can click pictures and adjust portrait lighting in post or adjust portrait lighting before you click the picture and set it according to what you want. The phone has a 4500 milliamp hour battery and a fast charger is finally included inside the box. So you'll get an 18 watt charger and you don't have to spend extra for an additional charger. So you get an 18 watt charger, you get fast charging and you get a 4500 battery, which means that you're gonna last at least two days with this phone. And uh, that is what you would expect from this device, at least initially when you're using the device, setting it up, you'll get lesser battery life. But later on, when you stabilize and stop using the phone as much, uh, you'll get a good days of use. Five to six hours of screen on time is no problem for this device. Overall, the Redmi Note 8 Pro is a pretty impressive device from Xiaomi. And for the price that they've offered it, it's gonna be a really difficult phone to beat in this price segment. The only downside to this, and for a lot of people, is the untested MediaTek G90T chipset. Only time will tell if this chipset will survive daily use and abuse that Redmi Note users will give to this phone. And if this chip does survive that, this is gonna be a great device in the long run. That's it for this video, guys. If you liked it, don't forget to smash the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you're not already a part of Team Igan. This has been Bharat. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.